complimentary meals, showers, and of course, beds. Today I'm going to be trying out Amtrak's new roomettes on a nearly 30 hour journey, so join me as we try this unique product while also dealing with a classic Amtrak mess. Good morning from the Oculus at the World Trade Center. It is 5 a.m. and we're on the way to Moynihan Train Hall where we're going to try the brand new Viewliner 2 roomettes on the Amtrak Cardinal. Today I'm joined by my friend Will, who is thrilled to have woken up at 4 a.m. for this adventure. If you're wondering why we're up so early, it's because the Cardinal leaves New York at 6.45 in the morning. Moynihan Train Hall is an amazing place, and our early departure meant that it was much calmer than usual. Usually, when you're traveling on an Amtrak sleeper car, you get access to the Metropolitan Lounge here. Unfortunately, despite there being several early morning departures on the weekends, this wasn't actually open by the time that our train left. So instead, we killed some time in the pleasant Amtrak waiting area, complete with surprisingly comfortable benches and somewhat functional outlets. About 15 minutes before departure, we were called to track 8, where we finally got a glimpse of our home for the next day. We stepped onto the very last car, which is a combination of a baggage room and roomettes. Here's a quick glimpse of what our room looks like, complete with a bunk bed that lowers down whenever you want it. Pillows and water bottles were also waiting for us at the room. In the back of this car are a few bathrooms and of course a shower, which we'll be trying out later. And don't worry, we'll be back in a bit with an in-depth look at the room setup. We pulled out of Penn Station right on time, so while we roll through New Jersey, let's talk about our route in the room today. The Amtrak Cardinal runs from New York City down through Philly and DC, before heading west through the Virginias, Ohio, and Indiana, ultimately arriving in Chicago after a scheduled 28 hours. However, as we'll see later, long Amtrak trains like this are known for notorious delays, and they can really add up on such a long trip. 20 minutes after leaving Penn Station, this menu reminded us of one of the biggest perks of sleeper cars, free meals. Unlike other routes, this train doesn't include any freshly prepared meals, so it's all just microwavable stuff, but it's still nice to not have to worry about bringing or buying food. Though somewhat unknown, you also get unlimited complimentary beverages throughout your trip. This morning, Will and I both opted for the pancakes and sausages. Not a luxurious meal by any stretch, but it satisfies the needs of two college students. Will? Thoughts? It's fine. It's pretty good. On this route, Amtrak sells roomette tickets, but not all roomettes are created equal. On many routes, Amtrak uses their original Viewliner 1 trains, which are much older and infamously have a toilet in the room. But on the Cardinal, as well as a few other routes, Amtrak has introduced new Viewliner 2 cars over the last few years, which means newer, toiletless rooms for passengers. By the way, make sure to stick around for the end, where I'm going to talk about how much we paid for this ticket and analyze if it was all worth it. While stopped in Philadelphia, we finally gave in to our tired state. William, you know what time it is? At time? So under each chair is the thing that you push, and then you push down this seat as well as struggles with it. And then essentially you get this long bed, which does get wider here. This seat is a bit wider. And the same is true with the bed on top. And the bed on top, you lower by rotating this and then pulling. Once made, the beds were surprisingly comfortable. Will is six feet tall, and even he didn't have any issues fitting into either of the beds. Our pillows were pretty basic, but the sheets and blanket that they give are really soft and comfortable. After some quick rest, we rolled into Washington, D.C. This is the stop where Amtrak switches from electric to diesel engines, so we were told that we had to wait an hour here. At the time, we were oblivious to the chaos that awaited. Anyway, to kill some time, we toured the station. By the way, when trying to get one of these clips of the train, an employee from our specific train came up and did the whole, you don't have permission to record thing, which has actually never happened to me before. Ironically, Amtrak has a very clear recording policy on their website, which says that I was all good, so I really don't know what that was about. What a beautiful station. This is actually quite big. It's not the nicest, but it's big. We just walked like a minute out. This is very different. And look at this, another cool fancy place. Will you give a thumbs up? We hopped back on our train, rolled just out of the station, and then sat with these pleasant views of Washington DC for the next hour. 
Eventually, we were told that we had to go back into the station to solve some issue with our computers, and we weren't really given any updates beyond that. Thankfully, Will and I had our scheduled lunch to kill the time. Will got the chicken parm, and I tried the salmon. All the meals also come with a bun, as well as your choice of a dessert pastry. Neither of our meals was terribly memorable, though I do think that chicken parm is just something that's a bit more easily microwavable. What was memorable was this, the legitimately amazing butter cakes from a small restaurant in Delaware. I'd never had anything like this, and Will and I actually ended up switching both of our dessert orders for dinner to these butter cakes. Despite being packaged and prepared for travel, these still tasted fresh and sweet as ever. After our meal, we continued sitting, now without electricity, for hours. No updates were provided, and the best we got was this notification from Amtrak. More than five hours after arriving in DC, we finally left just past 3 p.m. Beyond just general boredom and inconvenience, this delay was really unfortunate for one big reason, the scenery. The Cardinal is a route that's known for some amazing scenery as you travel through West Virginia, but with this delay, we were scheduled to pass all of that well into the night. Regardless, we did our best to enjoy the remaining views. We also tried out our brownie that we'd left over from lunch. Nothing special. To stretch our legs, we explored the rest of the train. While I don't yearn to try them for a day-long trip, Amtrak has some pretty spacious and comfortable coach seats. I've actually quite enjoyed these on other overnight trips, but a full day plus an overnight might just be too long. After the dining car, we passed through the other sleeper car, which is a combination of Amtrak bedrooms and roomettes. As an apology for the delay, all customers were given these little snack packs. It's a nice thought, but I really don't feel like these made up for the four hours of sitting around. Especially since we were in DC, which is an Amtrak hub that almost certainly has access to actual catering. It's rolling on the bay. I ain't seen the sunshine since Halloween. Charlottesville was our last fresh air break before dinner. Apparently, this is where the crew from the eastbound and westbound Cardinals meet and like do a little swap over. So the, the eastbound one that wasn't as delayed as ours was, was just waiting here. At least the crew was waiting here for a long time. Very nice trees out here in Charlottesville. The landscape became increasingly hilly, a somewhat sad reminder of all that we were set to miss in the nighttime. Soon, it was dinner time. This time, we tried the enchiladas and the beef burgundy. The stew was really good, but the enchiladas weren't great. It's also worth noting that Will actually tried to order the chicken parm, but they'd completely run out of it. Not a huge deal, but you would think that they would stock all of their popular options accordingly. They're all right but they're not warm this time. I headed back to my room, but not before doing a quick bathroom tour. This definitely could be less rusty. There's also a lot of places that say cups and do not have cups. The same thing is the case in our room. Also, Amtrak locks in bathrooms have this little light that indicates when they're actually locked. This rattles a lot. And of course, before getting ready for the night, we have to try out the showers. Will went first, and when he came back, he didn't seem thrilled. And here, you'll see why. Thank you, William. We got towels here, got my clothes, have a bunch of little soaps, shampoos, little rags and whatnot. Let's check it out. We got a kind of see-through window. Amtrak themed door. And then an actually pretty big shower. Although Will warned me that the pressure on this isn't the best, so. Uh, I think I found what Will's talking about. There's like a total of three streams of water coming out of this. They're warm, but that's about it. A few moments later. Conclusion? Yeah, the water was warm, but there's like three little streams with the entire pressure of like a fire hose and it just hurts. Also, this linen shoe is like really small, which either is poor design or just means that not a lot of people use the shower. 
All right, so now that we've had plenty of time to get familiar with this room, my good friend Will is going to guide us through the many amenities and features. Uh, the, I think the light switches were the first things we noticed. There are seven light switches. Each seat has its own area light, which is just a bright general light that lights up the area. Ooh. There's also a more focused reading light next to it that you can swivel and point. The same goes for that side. Also on that side, is a ceiling light. This is what we have on. This is the only light we have on right now. Throw mm -hmm. us into darkness for a bit. Uh, there's also the night light. Yeah, I'm gonna show cool. that. A little blue. It's like right in the middle of the blue ceiling light. light. Yeah. Yeah, so if you turn the ceiling light on, it sort of gets... Drowned out. Drowned out, yeah. Here we have a reading light. When the top bunk is down, this is that reading light up there. That's actually very handy. Um, so I was in that bunk and there are two light switches for the mirror light one here and one here Oh interesting. So they both control the same thing. Yep. Huh uh, So that does lights those are the lights. All right, there are four AC vents in this. Okay. Okay. Show us around. There's are the standard two at each seat or one at each seat as you would expect There's also one where each bed would be so when the top bed is lower under this one's gonna be sort of at face level, and this one's at face level with you. I see, I see. At the bottom. This button here, there's a PA in each room so that you don't have to strain to listen through the door. You can just press that and... Uh, let's look at the sink. This is the goofiest the random thing. Normally, we've noticed all the other roomettes have had cups, sort of like little small paper cups. I don't know why we don't. I assume just some sort of oversight. We'll go with the sink. The little light turns on when it's open. Ooh. Here we have a whole sink. And it drains just back down here. I see, I see. Uh, when you fold it back up, I guess all the water pops on down. The room came with some hand towels and washcloths and bar soap uh, for the sink. I guess if we want to brush our teeth or something. And of course, the classic for the V-Liner 2 is that the upper bunk actually has a window. Very nice. I think the upper bunk view is actually better than the lower bunk. Here. Yeah, I gotta try of, it for a bit. You're below eye level of the window, not to mention that your window is lower. Yeah. Something else to note, the door here, like, it doesn't actually go all the way. Like, it only goes that far and a little hook holds it in. It's not very clear, but like, I don't know, that's just our door that's messed up. After a somewhat successful shower, we got in bed and watched the sunset over hilly Virginia. While it may initially seem inconvenient to be at the back of the train, that also meant that we were the furthest away from the train horn, which is pretty nice. I'm a really light sleeper, so I still woke up every few hours, but there really wasn't much to see in the night. At 6.32 a.m., I properly woke up as we were just leaving Cincinnati and the sun was rising over the Midwest. Had we been running on time, we'd be eating breakfast somewhere past Indianapolis at this point, and we would have been about an hour south of our destination, Lafayette, Indiana. However, by this point, we were still running about four hours late, so we had plenty of time to take in this cloudy morning in the Midwest. Good morning. It's just before 7 a.m. Will slept very well. I slept pretty well too. I had a few times where I woke up, but yeah, I'm gonna try to get some more shut-eye because we still have like four hours and a half left, but pretty comfortable. We rolled into Indiana and got our breakfast just past 8 a.m. Will stuck with the pancakes and sausages and I tried the cheese omelet. Final pancake bite on Amtrak. Satisfactory. It's pretty good. I like those. No. I think for future breakfast, I would alternate between this and the omelet just for health. At 9.30, we arrived at Indianapolis's Union Station. Now, there was something wrong with the bathrooms and coach, so we were stopped here for an hour. I love Indiana, but geez, is this a sad station.
If I were not here while there was a train, I would assume this was abandoned. There's a bunch of these like railings with where there used to be staircases to something. So final review, actually really nice. Like both Will and I, we're not short. We're not like super tall, but we're not short. And both had plenty of space, pretty comfortable. Like this mattress topper is pretty good. These blankets, very nice. I've heard other people talk about them. They're yeah. very soft. And yeah, like I slept well, Will slept well. He's holding the camera, but he's not. At 11 a.m., we finally left Indianapolis. As we pass through our last stop, Crawfordsville, Indiana, and near our destination of Lafayette, let's talk about how much this trip cost and if it was worth it. I booked this trip eight months in advance and it cost me $382, including all taxes. On sleeper cards, having two people entails an extra cost, so when we added Will to the reservation, that was an extra $144. You can still find tickets at that price, but only if you're booking way out. So more likely, you're probably gonna be paying somewhere in the range of four to $600 for this specific route. Note that the same experience on other routes tends to be a lot more expensive. So is it worth it? Well, it really just depends on who you are and what you're trying to get out of this. If you're like me and are interested in the scenery and just getting this experience at some point, then yeah, it's not bad. It was surprisingly comfortable, and if you're with someone, it's not too boring. That being said, you really shouldn't have your expectations too high. The microwavable food just isn't that great, and you always have to be ready to accept defeat in the form of a brutal delay. And honestly, our five hours are nothing compared to some of the delays that Amtrak has. Additionally, the state of these relatively new cars was just disappointing. Having a working shower head really doesn't seem like that big of an ask, and what we experienced effectively took away showers as a reasonable amenity. Also, although Wi-Fi is always free on Amtrak trains, neither of us were ever able to connect to the signal in our car. In fact, while we were stopped in DC, our phones only got working Wi-Fi when they connected to another train that pulled up to the platform next to us, making it clear that it was some issue with our car specifically. Beyond just dealing with delays, Amtrak's customer service is also just really bad, so if something goes wrong with your trip, don't expect anything from them. For example, Amtrak usually sends out a survey after you've taken a trip with them to hear about your experience. Evidently, they didn't want to hear anything about how they'd handle this delay because this was the first time ever that I just didn't get that survey. Nonetheless, I wanted to give them a fair shot, so I reached out to Amtrak about the delay, the broken showerhead, and the issues with the Wi-Fi. I got an automated response telling me that they'd respond in the order that my email was received, and two months later, I've gotten no response. So yeah, are Amtrak sleepers overpriced and kind of glorified on YouTube? Absolutely. Does that make these trips any less cool? Not really. My conclusion is that if you want a comfortable and very reliable way to get from A to B, where you might have some decent customer support, just save your money and buy a first class plane ticket. But if you want to try something new and hopefully see some amazing scenery, then this is something worth trying at some point. And just like that, the Cardinal heads out for the few hours remaining to Chicago, leaving us in Lafayette, Indiana. Or Lafayette, I guess. <laughs>